V-Ray Vision is Chaos's real-time rasterized viewer. With Vision, you can explore your scenes on the go, create quick previews, animations, and a lot more. Let's look at some of the ways our vision makes it easier to bring your vision to life. We'll start with setting up a generic material for an override and turning V-Ray Vision on. Now that our scene is loaded into Vision, we can see that everything is textured with our basic gray material. Let's turn Override off so we can see the actual shaders that we have. Vision will take a moment to load all the shaders and we can move on to exploring our scene in real time. We can orbit our model, pan and zoom, switch through different views, and adjust our exposure from V-Ray's render settings by tweaking the EV in the camera rollout. If we have a hard time adjusting the EV, we can always count on V-Ray to do the job for us. Simply click on the little sun icon in Vision to turn on auto exposure and you will always get a perfectly exposed image. Another big strength of Vision is that we can edit our model and see the changes rendered in real time. Let's open Chaos Cosmos and place some assets in the scene. As you can see, we can move them, rotate them, scale them, and observe how they look rendered out on the go. I've already prepared some vegetation and assets for the scene, so I will delete this tree and unhide what I've set up in advance so we can continue exploring. Let's move over to Vision and see what we can tweak directly. Click on the gear wheel icon and you'll see the first set of options. These determine the quality of our image and adjust performance. Let's toggle temporal anti-aliasing. Look how the edges of the objects become more jagged when AA is off especially the leaves of the trees. Next, we can adjust shadow quality, which will determine the level of detail when calculating shadows. If we choose low quality shadows, Vision uses a lower filtering setting for the shadows and the shadow map is downscaled while we interact with our project, giving us better responsiveness. Medium shadow quality uses better filtering, but still has some optimizations. The high settings gives us the best filtering setting for shadows, and it can also simulate soft shadows by taking into account the sun size parameter. Last but not least, check High Quality Cosmos Assets. To see the difference that this makes, we need to reset the live link between SketchUp and Vision. Let's explain how this works. Every Cosmos Assets has LODs, or Levels of Detail, stored within it. There is a very basic version of each Cosmos Asset, a medium detailed version, and a highly realistic version. When high quality Cosmos assets are switched off, Vision will use the medium LOD for every asset that is close to the viewer and replace assets that are further away with the lowest LOD. This way, we have a more responsive experience. When we turn high quality Cosmos assets on, every Cosmos asset will be represented by its highest LOD. Just click on the Render button in the Asset Editor to break the link and click on Vision's icon from the toolbar to sync things again. This looks much nicer. Next are the exposure controls that we can adjust separately from V-Ray's EV if we have to. These are also useful for exploring different scenarios. After that are the navigation controls. By default, Vision has the same navigation as SketchUp, but also comes with one additional option. The Fly Mode. Let's enable that by filling the checkbox or using the Tab key on our keyboard. Now we can adjust the speed control so we can move slowly through our scene. Now we can move around our scene using our mouse and arrow keys on the keyboard, just like in a game, with the difference that we can fly up and down. OK, let's reset the camera position by clicking on one of the views that we have saved in SketchUp and continue to explore the settings in Vision. On the right, we have color corrections, which gives us the option to use sRGB color space, and if we want, we can apply an ACES curve for a more contrasting look out of the box, and also adjust exposure, contrast, saturation, etc. on the go. When we are happy with the adjustments, we can always export them for later use, when we reopen the scene or share it with other people. The last icon is where save and export settings are. Let's open them and see what we have. To save a shot from Vision, first we need to select a folder and a name for the image. After that, we can choose the image format. In this case, the default PNG works great. 
The next option is whether we want to save exactly what we see from the vision window or if we would like to use the project's resolution, which is set in V-Ray's render settings. For this one, I will use the project resolution. If we need to export a larger image, we can simply dial in the scale for our render. For example, I will use a scale of two times and this will give us a final image size of 3520 by 4400 pixels. Now all is left to do is click Export and the image is saved. Still images have their use, but sometimes we need to create whole animations and vision can greatly help us with that, especially when time is scarce. To set this up, Let's break the live link between SketchUp and Vision again and set up our animations in SketchUp. Select the views that you want included in your animation and then enable animation in V-Ray's render settings. Now, when we start Vision, we can see there is a timeline on the bottom of the window. This means we have successfully set up our animations. Let's click the play button and preview it. Great! The export process is almost the same as when saving a still image. We need to choose a folder and a name for the sequence. I will also dial back the resolution multiplier to 1 as we don't need it in this case. Let's check the Export Animation checkbox and then click Export. Now you can leave Vision to do the rest.